Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I tie my homemade stinger hooks. And the hooks that I tie don't use any type of hardware, so no crimp sleeves or uh, any type of swivels or anything like that. Uh, the first time I made this style of hook was out of necessity essentially. I had run out of stingers and I believe it was like Sunday afternoon and I had somebody who wanted to go out on Monday morning and all of the tackle shops and stuff were, were closed or I, I couldn't make it to the, the shops in time. And so I spent a couple of hours that evening trying to come up with a way to tie a stinger hook without needing any, any hardware. And so this is what I came up with. Just an FYI, uh, you know, I'm not trying to convert anyone to, <laughs> to use this style of hook. This is more of a kind of an emergency situation where you've maybe found yourself where you can't get stingers, um, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, this is a nice alternative. Uh, I do understand that there are some flaws in the design, okay? However, uh, this is the style of stinger that I've used for many years now, and I've never had any issues or break-offs or anything like that. So let's get to the actual putting together of the, the, the hook here. So the treble that I use is typically an 8 to 10 size. Uh, in this case, it was a size 6, just because that's all I could find. And then the line that I use is anywhere from 8 to 12 pound test fluorocarbon. In this case, I have a 12 pound test. And so the very first thing that I do is I, I tie a simple polymer knot to the, uh, to the, uh, to the treble hook. And I'm not going to go through the uh, you know ins and outs of tying a polymer knot. There's probably a million really good YouTube videos on how to tie a polymer knot. Uh, and so that is the knot, however, that I use to go to the to the treble. So we'll fast forward through this just a little bit. And so there I wetten the knot a little bit, tighten it up, and then here I'm simply cutting off the uh, the tag end. Okay, and so there you have the first component. So we have the treble tied. Now this next part here is going to take a little bit of of uh, getting used to in practice, and it's going to really depend on how long you like the leader for your for your stinger hook. So that's about how long I like mine. Okay, so that's how I'm going to create my first loop. Okay, so that's basically how I gauge the 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 length of uh, of my loop here. And so. I've created a single loop, okay, and that's actually the loop that's going to go over the jig hook, and we're going to pull tight. Now, um, in order to do that, though, now we need to create a uh, a slip knot, okay? So here is your first loop, that first big loop. That's what's going to go over the the hook of the jig, and now we have to create a, a slip knot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tag end and go through the bottom of the large loop, okay, and now that small loop there, that is where we're going to create our slip knot. So in order to do that now, as I'm going to take the tag end again, I'm going to pass it through the bottom of that smaller loop two times. So there's one, and then we pass it through the bottom of that loop one more time. And at this point now, you can cinch that down. Don't forget to moisten it. Uh, I believe I forgot to do so, but that's, oh, there we go. So I did it after the fact, but typically you would moisten it, okay, and then you can tie that tight. And now, so what you can see is you have a large loop with a slip knot, okay, and it's that large loop that you're going to put on the, uh, on the jig hook, and you're going to cinch that down, okay. However, at this point in time, that slip knot, okay, uh, will actually unravel under any type of tension, Okay, so in order to stop it from unraveling, what you're going to simply do is with your tag end, okay, so that I'm just showing here that's the slip knot that's going to unravel, okay, if we don't do this next step, is with the tag end is you're going to just do a simple overhand knot, okay, one more, just a simple overhand knot, okay, and you're going to try to get that knot as close to the slip knot as possible. Okay, so there we go, and at this point you could moisten it again, and so you try to get it as close as you can to that uh, slip knot as possible. 
Now, if you don't get it right on the slip knot, that's okay, because as soon as you cinch it down, and that's the next part here, so you can see there's a little bit of a gap between my slip knot and the overhand knot there. But when I cinch it down, okay, there we go. I cinch it down with my pliers. And you'll see now that the overhand knot, okay, has butted up against the slip knot and has created just one knot there, okay? And so now you have your loop with the slip knot on it, and that slip knot is not going to come undone now under tension. And so at this point, I simply take my snips and cut off the tag end. And there you have it. Okay, so there you have a homemade stinger hook with no hardware, just a treble hook and some, uh, some line. Okay, and so it's that large loop there, as I had mentioned, that you're going to wrap around the, the hook of the jig, okay? And so I have an example of that coming up right here. So I don't have an actual jig, I just have a, a just a standard hook here. And so what you do is you take the, the loop on the stinger, put it over the hook like so, and you just simply cinch it down as such. And there you have it, okay? And if you wanna remove the stinger, what you need to do, and this is a little bit of the tricky part, is you got to use your fingernails to kind of grasp that knot, and you simply pull it down, and now it is ready for uh, another use. And so there you have it. The stingers can be used quite a few times. And so just to recap, these were made uh, out of necessity. I needed some stinger hooks. I couldn't get to the shop in order to, to pick some up. And so I, I managed to come up with... with these knots here uh, and I've been using them ever since so all of the YouTube videos where I'm jigging for walleye uh, this is the the type of stinger hook that I use exclusively I've never had any issues with it now with that being said obviously if you can buy ones that are are made with crimp sleeves and stuff uh, that would probably be preferred I understand especially in the design of this that there's a lot of tension being placed on the line especially at that slip knot Okay, and I can hear some of you seasoned veterans saying, well, I don't trust that because that, that it'll break around the slip knot. I haven't personally had that happen yet, okay? However, uh, you know, this is more so just uh, something that you can use in a pinch, okay? Obviously, buying stingers is, is cheap and they, they're, they're heavily reliable, but in a pinch, here's something that you could use. And like I said, all of the uh, uh, walleye jigging videos that I have posted on YouTube thus far, this is the type of stinger that I'm using. And I haven't, uh, like I said, had any issues with them uh, breaking or anything like that. So anyways, there you have it. Um, take care and we will catch you on the next one.